Good evening and uh, welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting of Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. At this time, I'm gonna call upon everyone so we can stand and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the flag for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd ask you to all remain standing for a moment of silence in honor of our soldiers past and present. Thank you. The first case that we have, oh, actually I actually have an announcement to make. The next regular scheduled meeting for the Board of Appeals is Wednesday, January 10th of 2024. I'm gonna get used to saying that. And moving on to the public hearings portion of tonight's meeting. It's a continued case, it's variance case ZAV 23-6, which was continued from November 15th, 2023. Mm. The petitioner in the case is Pascomancet Land Company, LLC. The subject property is 481 Fonts Corner Road, also known as Map 63, Lot 11-17. It's located within the Office Industrial and Marijuana Overlay Districts. The matter has been previously advertised. We've already read into the comments. Mm -hmm. It's a continued matter, gentlemen. I think one of the issues that we were having that there was concern was the impact that this particular project, if it were granted, that it may have on a sewage treatment plant, given that there have been representations made that is closely approaching its uh, limit. Mm -hmm. um, I think the magic percentage, or daily limit, or daily load, and the magic percentage, I guess, is 80%. So I think if you all remember, the last time we gave them an opportunity so that they could speak to the members at the DPW mm -hmm. to see if they could reach some sort of uh, an understanding as to some remedial measures or some form of an abatement that would lessen the load on the system. So I'll call upon the petitioner's representative. I see before me Attorney Dabrowski. How are you? Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening, board members. Uh, we did have a meeting, my, my, by the way, Mark Bobrowski, my office is in Concord, Massachusetts. We did have a meeting with DPW representatives last week or the week before, and I think it's their intention to give you a presentation this evening. So I defer to them to go forward, and then we'll pick up the baton after that. Thank you. So I guess at this time we'll call upon the DPW's representatives to come forward, and that's what's going on. Good evening, board members. The if you could just identify Tim Barber, Director of Public Works. Thank you. So I don't have a presentation as you know to put up on a screen or anything, but I did submit uh, that summary presentation to you, uh, which is based on a study that's been done for the past five and a half years of of flow. Um, BOD loading, concentrations, and TSS uh, at the treatment facility uh, by Stantec. The, um, the presentation includes uh, graphs of the past five and a half years of each of those items, influent flow. Uh, BOD concentrations. All right, so that's on page five. Is that what you're referring to? Yes. So based on what I can see here, if you follow this, it actually looks as if it's actually not any worse than what it was in some time in late January or before April of 2018. That's five years ago, if I follow this just as a, a, an ordinary graph. So quite frankly, I don't have a lot of familiarity with this, so I think you're probably gonna have to describe, explain this to me as if I was in third grade. So there's, there's so, a lot of acronyms here that I'm not yeah, familiar with. Yeah. So this is a month, monthly average, rather than the you know the the previous uh, document that was given to you um, that we discussed last time was an annual average uh, from our NIPTES permit from from our 2022 um, flows, I guess, which was a which was also a drought year. So so there's peaks and flows, you know. Throughout throughout the year, you know, usually in the summertime you'll have uh, drier mm -hmm. season, so you have less I and I in the system, um, or you have less flows. Um, but that doesn't directly lower the the BOD concentrations or the loading or the TSS. Let me ask you something. You keep referring to I and I. 
Yeah. Obviously, that, that means something, and I, I, it slips me for the moment. Oh, what does sorry. that actually it, mean? It's inflow and infiltration, which is, you know, during rain events, um, you'll have inflow, you know, from, from runoff, from stormwater. So that's storm water. Bre breaches in the system, in Correct. essence, right? Correct. Well, yeah. What, uh, what percentage does that actually contribute to the problem that we have? Um, you're, you're somewhere around 25 to 28 percent, 29 percent. Of the total load and the high peak? Of the total flow. Of the total flow. Yeah. And what is the town doing to address that? Because it appears to me that some of that has to do with the fact that there may be cracks in lines, mm -hmm. sewer lines, and older systems, things of that nature. Yeah, so in, in past years, we've, we've gone through most of our cross-country easements, and we've reconstructed the manhole structures in all these easements to raise them a minimum of 12 inches above grade with uh, new seal tight covers and then <clears throat> seal tight rings on the inside to, uh, to keep any of that runoff uh, from getting into the system. And, and previously we've also done other projects where uh, we've looked at flow in lines so we, we put sensors in, in, in mains and, and track excess flows and then track them back and if then you you can camera lines and and then we'll do some slip lining so line the pipes to, to seal them that would be in homes from the actual public system in the roadway to the house no that's typically in in main systems in 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 main so, you know we, we do that mains? so yeah for for homes we'll, we'll typically look at um like sump pump connections um, drain leader connections into into the sewer lines. So we'll we can do smoke testing, dye testing, and uh, and inspections. So, so we're we're also currently uh, under contract with another consultant to do uh, multiple uh, sensors installations throughout the town. Flow sensors uh, to to look at infiltration during rain events. So. They, I believe they're gonna install those this spring, probably early March. The sensors? The sensors, yeah. And what are those gonna basically provide us information of? So they'll sensor the, the difference in flows from dry times to, to rain events when, when groundwater fluctuates and... and, and but we already know there's water. a problem. Right, and, but the, the solution is to track where it's coming from and to, and to repair it. I'm sure you have a hunch where a significant part of the problem lies. So, so right now we we see flows at pump stations and at the treatment facility. So, the the areas are pretty broad where we you know so so to narrow it down to a specific main or a specific road, you know, it it takes a lot of time and and, and data analysis. So, but this chart here on page five. What am I supposed to extrapolate from this? Because based on my limited understanding, it appears to me that there's less flow or less influent now than there was in January of 2018, unless the month of January 2018 had an extraordinary amount of rain. Yeah, so it appears that that probably was a large, a, a large amount of rain that month, or, or s snow, snow melt. So probably high groundwater. And, and a lot of precipitation. And that's what that basically depicts, is the amount of flow that existed <clears throat> during those, during those period of, periods of time. Correct, so if you look at the, the red line at the top, that's a 4.2 million gallon per day. Um, that's is that the limit for our, for our system? The Capacity, that's what our plant is designed to hold, to handle and to discharge based on our permit. Um, the 3.36, that, that orange line, that's your 80%. Okay. So. so that just shows how many times we've been above the 80% mark and above the 100% mark in the last five and a half years. What this tells me is that we've been, this has been an ongoing problem for a long time. It has. It definitely has. So why is it it's wearing, rearing its ugly head only now? Because we we started to see some breakdown at the plant and uh, and some effects of the the overage in the capacity and flows and the and the BOD concentrations. 
So we've, you know, we've, we've tried uh, stopping, allowing septic hauling. So, so when te septic haulers pump out septic tanks, we have a facility that receives that. Well, that increases the concentration of the BOD. Uh, so we've actually stopped allowing that altogether to, to try to lower the BOD, but it, but it just keeps coming back up. So if you, if you continue past page six and then you get into page seven, similar graph. So the, you have your large dash red line at the 200 milligram per liter. That is the capacity, design capacity for our facility. And then the smaller dash line below that, the 160 milligram per liter, that's the 80% BOD concentration. What does BOD stand for again? It's a biochemical oxygen demand. So basically, this has to do with the what's in the flu, the the water. Let's say the water in the sewer. What's in there is this type of a. Does that have to do with the level of oxygen? Is that what it is? That that it demands. Yes. Yep. That it demands. Yes. I'm not. I'm not going to say that I understand that. So, so it's required. You 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 aerate the 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 wastewater to apply oxygen to it. To, I to, saw those to treat tanks, it. those, those yeah. rectangular tanks where the water movement is going on. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so then page eight is a similar where we have TSS concentrations. So that's total suspended solids in the system. So let me ask you, what are we doing now? So given that this is more than what it should be, so what do you do? You let it just stay there longer in order for it to oxygenate? For, to yeah, ensure. so we have to aerate it longer, and 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 TSS TSS also it 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 suspended solids in the in the influence. So you have to you know you have to treat that. And what happens is when you have a lot of high TSS and it, and it's really murky, you get you get higher uh, enterococci samples, which which then trigger uh, MCL exceedances. So, so when you, you know, when you, the the recent, the most recent NIPTES permit has cut the allowable enterococci in your effluent uh, almost in half. So, so to meet that, meet those demands, you have to continuously treat this at a higher level. So if you move on to, to page nine, page nine is more of a, just a, a data summary, just a, a word summary of, of all the graphs. Before you get to that, is there not a way to accelerate the, uh, the process so that even though you have a, a, sh a smaller space in order for that to be done, is there a way that they could be accelerated? Well, we, we're, working on an, we're working on an upgrade to, to allow better aeration um, and, and to actually help increase the capacity of the plant. In, in, the, in the aeration upgrade, it will be designed to include for further upgrades in the plant for capacity. So if we have a upgrade, the allowable capacity, the, the aeration upgrades will, will be able to handle the upgraded flows. But currently, you know, these, uh, the aeration fans, they are 32 years old. So, you know, they, they just can't handle the, you know, the work anymore, I'd say. Okay. So if you, if you look at this, the summary, 30% of the month, monthly influent flows exceeded 80% of the design flow. 13% of the daily influent flows exceeded 80% of the design flows. 72% of the monthly BOD. 
BOD concentration exceeded 80% of the design flow, 52% of the monthly concentration exceeded 100% of the design flow, 22% of the monthly BOD loading exceeded 80% of the design flow, and 2% of the monthly BOD loading exceeded 100% of the design flow. 72% um, of the monthly TSS concentration exceeded 80% of the design flow. 47% of the monthly TSS concentration exceeded 100% of the design flow. 11% of the, of the TSS loading exceeded the 80% design flow, and, and only 3% of the monthly TSS loading exceeded 100% of the design flow. So that basically, it, it states that we are not running below 80%, although our annual average may say that, but our monthly average, our weekly average differs. But when you, when you compile that with, um, with the with a, a summer dry flow for a few months, yeah, it, it averages out. It, it, it may average below eighty percent. So, if I understand this correctly, are there times in which things are actually brought out and just shipped out to the ocean when they're not completely aerated in accordance with what they're supposed to be? Not yet, but that that is, you know, on the brink. So. So if we get to a point where, you know, we cannot treat the, the flow coming in, eventually you're going to have to let it go out. This doesn't, this, this study didn't include the outfall um, going out to the ocean, but the outfall actually has a higher percentage of 100% design flow. Um, it actually, it actually uh, lifts the manholes at the peak peak elevations and and the effluent will flow down the street rather than go out to the, the discharge point out to the ocean. So that's another upgrade that we're looking at at, at a design if if we have to install a second outflow in eventually or or upgrade the one that's there. I see a lot of emphasis on improving the system, improving the, 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 the pumping station or improving the, let me just say, the, uh, the sewage treatment plant. Yeah. But, you know, and I don't mean to be facetious, right? I know you, I respect you, but I think more emphasis needs to be put on I and I because if you reduce that 25%, even just down to 15 or just down to 10%, you got, you, a lot of these numbers go by the wayside because you're no longer anywhere near exceeding or getting close to 80%. Because now you're reducing the amount of flow that comes in, and that yeah. seems to me to be a, a better fix to the bigger overall problem. Well, the I and I actually, if you look at I and I, it's it's more of a dilution factor, right? So, so if you look at like BOD concentration mixed with uh, runoff from the rain or infiltration from groundwater, it actually dilutes the wastewater and. It does, make, but it's still a lot more gallons you have to deal with. So that's flow, not loading. Yes. So there, there's multiple factors there. So, so the while the flows are reaching the eighty percent mark, but they're not, they're not as bad as the, as the the BOD loading. That's that's the biggest issue is the concentration of the wastewater. I understand the concentration, but if there's less flow, there's less <coughs> water in those tanks, then you have the additional time to occupy that additional volume to allow for the BOD to break down over time. Correct. What's it take for, you know, on average, for something that comes in with gray or dirty water for you to actually make it good enough so that it can be pumped out to the ocean? I don't know. I'm not 100% sure on the timeline that it goes through the, through the treatment process, I guess. It, it depends on the flow at that time, uh, how many banks of UV you're running. Um, you know. Less. Does it take a week? No, no, no. A couple days? No, it, it comes in and out daily. Daily. Yeah. All right, so it's hours. Yeah, hours. Yeah. Okay. You understand? I don't know this stuff. Yeah. yeah. But we all have to deal with it at some point. We do. All right. So, so I and I projects 
they they take a long time. They cost a lot of money, and you know, we work on them. You know, you know I think probably <laughs> somewhere around ten years ago, we we did a large project, and we we removed about a million gallons per day of II. That's great. You know, it took a, a few years for that project to be completed, but we're we're back where we were. Back to the same yeah. numbers. But it may not be as a result of INI. It could be oh, just a result of no. Addition. You have you have development. Um, you know, you have a lot more development. Sometimes use fluctuates. You know. All right. And gentlemen, I know I kind of so we taken over here. But do you gentlemen have any questions of this? Uh, so I can say we met last last time we were here. Yes. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I don't mean oh. to interrupt. Um, last time we were here, we discussed possible mitigation. Um, proposals. Um, we we discussed a holding tank, a grease trap, and uh, aeration. aeration. So aeration for the BOD, grease trap for the fats, oils, and greases, and uh, and holding for, I guess, peak periods to to as a delay, as a time delay before you can discharge. Um, um, Mr. Steen and Ms. Poprowski came back and basically stated that those mitigation efforts are not feasible for their site due to the site constraints. Um, so we, we did discuss possible uh, mitigation fees. And so some kind of agreement would have to be drawn up and uh, brought to my board of public works and approved between the two parties in order to move forward with with a sewer connection. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Gentlemen, you have any questions of Mr. Barber? I have no uh, questions. Well, I have no question. Gentlemen? I have none. I, I have a, a question, Mr. Chairman, but I don't know who to address it to. I'm looking at all the technical information that this gentleman has put forward, and I'm worse than you being snowed mm -hmm. on a lot of the stuff and the descriptions. But it just generally, to me, sounds like we're we're at the at the very brink of exceeding our uh, mm -hmm. our abilities, and we're, we're playing a dangerous game if we continue to overload the system. Before uh, the town had a chance to uh, increase the uh, ability to handle this flow with all of the technicalities. I'd be, I'd be very skeptical about dumping a great deal more into this system. That's just my observation. I may be wrong, but that's the way it sounds to me. I understand. Um, they also had provided the last time we were here, and I don't think you were here, Bob, unfortunately, but the, uh, I think the petition has also submitted an expert, uh, an opinion from another expert in this area who had a different take on this. But I think, you know, there are games that can be played with numbers, just in general, as how you how you submit them, how they're portrayed. But I think that those numbers were more of an average, of an, a yearly average, and that's what they were looking at, rather than looking on a specific date or just looking at any specific month. But on average, when you look at it and they are analyzing it on a yearly average, the system still seems to be well within the range where it could still be utilized for some time in the future. It's just that when you take small slices, and I think, I don't know if they're taking the worst case situations and just presenting them to us, I don't, but they're sending us and showing us that uh, on, on a monthly rate, just 30% of monthly effluent flows exceed 80%. So I don't know exactly if that's every month, if that's some months, I'm not really sure about all of that. Uh, I just always have difficulty where, you know, we're putting additional considerations that this board has to look over and decide upon <coughs> in granting a variance. And when I read 40A section 10, it doesn't have anything to do with sewer, right? It says nothing about sewer, the sewer capacity. That's, you know, quite frankly, within the purview of someone else. But there is a provision that's general, right? There's a general provision there that says that it doesn't, it doesn't uh, have any detrimental effect to the public good or the public at large. Here, yeah, if the, if the system, I guess there's an argument that can be made that if this, if this impacts the system, but, you know, I also look at it from the perspective of, of, of the petitioner. 
they don't have the entire burden of correcting a system that's been in existence for years. And if you look at this chart, it's been going on for a long time, mm -hmm. right? They, they've been exceeding rates for over five years. And if you go back further than that, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised that that's been going on for quite some time. I'm sure. Why is it now the, the siren being, being uh, rung or the bell being rung or the siren being played? I don't know. Uh, other than the fact that we're getting closer maybe in some aspects of this, maybe it's the BOD that's most concerning and it wasn't as concerning before. I'm not exactly certain, but um, I'm not in a position where I'm going to say I'm not going to grant anybody a variance even though they meet all the other requirements, but because, just because of the sewer. That's just me. There are two other people that make the decisions here as well. Um, we, have a, we have a select board, right? If they want to implement a moratorium, they can do that. They can do that at any point in time. Uh, we also have a DPW. They have a board. They can start putting certain restrictions if they want to. Uh, but for us, Obviously, I want the petitioner. They need to work with the town as well, right? There's got to be some balance from both sides. But I haven't heard from them yet either. That's just my take so, as to what's going on. I'm sure they're going to elaborate and give us some other statistics that we can kind of feel a little more warm and fuzzy about. But we'll see. Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Robert Almy. I'm the chair of the Public Works Board. Um, we are going to meet tomorrow morning at 7.30 in a noticed public meeting uh, on Zoom for anybody who wants to, but you're going to bring your own coffee. Thank you. Um, in any event, at, our, at your last meeting, we committed to sit down with the petitioner, which we did. We looked at four things, reducing flow into the project, which is standard water conservation, which they're going to do. We looked at some kind of a holding regime and they brought us technical information. We agree that it's not feasible on site. We then talked about I and I, there is a fee. Unfortunately, the funding that's available doesn't do much for us because I and I is very expensive to actually do. You gotta dig up mains and replace older stuff in the streets. However, it's an ongoing process. We'll be doing I and I till who knows when. Um, they've been doing it for, what, 30 years? And standard operating procedure you do, you keep up with it, you keep up with it, you keep up with it. Um, <clears throat> the other part of this, which um, we're working with the, the petitioner on, is fees. The last time, uh, fees were set for connections was uh, March 10th, 1999, <laughs> okay? So um, I'm gonna digress. I'm the new kid on the block. I've been uh, with the Public Works Board a little bit over three years. I've lived in the town a little over three years. I volunteered as soon as I came to town. I'm a volunteer. If something that I do upsets the people who appoint me, by all means, um, I'm not getting paid enough to. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm saying this. You guys understand this. Um, however, um, I have a responsibility mm -hmm. to on two things. Keep an eye on, pro on policy, okay? And the other is to listen to the staff. We have been listening to the staff uh, and reporting back to the select board for uh, something on the order of 10 months now on this particular issue. So this isn't new. You, you've availed yourselves to the tours. Um, we're trying very hard to find a way to allow development in this town and still meet the requirements of the law in terms of our standards. Um, we can look in the rearview mirror and ask ourselves, well, why wasn't this done 10, 15, 20 years ago? We can talk about why the, the, the powers that be didn't give us all the opportunity at town meeting to get all of the capital facilities and upgrades that we wanted this year. We'll go back next year. We're working on it. My point here is that the Rules and regulations for installation and connection of building sewers provides that <clears throat> under certain circumstances, and I won't go into a long quotation here, but this is section three, 
uh, I'm sorry, Article 3, Section 5, uh, subparagraphs B and H. It allows the Public Works Director to accept in lieu fees or fees to mitigate identified problems. We now have identified problems and we are in uh, negotiating mm -hmm. with the petitioner. We told you we needed two meetings, okay? So, and we said we'd report back. So we're reporting back. Um, I think what we're talking about here in the end is standard fees, standard I and I fees, and some kind of a payment to help us out with some of the near-term things that can be done. And just so you understand, um, the guys that run the plant monitor it 24 hours a day. They don't have staff on site, but they monitor it because they're so close to the limits that they have to make constant adjustments to stay within the limits. So even though they're doing this, you see them exceeding every once in a while. This is, um, from an operations standpoint, a real challenge. Um, I have the utmost res uh, respect for these guys. Uh, I have in public said they're magicians. They are. They're also keeping the town out of problems with violation of standards. So um, I won't take, you, take any more of your time. I'd like, till, un until your next meeting, to come back with some kind of an agreement so that, as we said, we get to yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'll call upon Mr. Bobrowski if he wants to come up and. Mr. Chairman, I wanted to have Mr. Cordero give you an explanation of why the other aspects of this, the other options here, didn't work. Are, are not feasible. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let, let him take a couple of minutes yeah, to do I'll that. Like that. You want to okay. hear it? Yeah, okay. I, mean, I took him at his word. He's for the town. I figured if you. No, yeah, I, I think because okay. probably. Groundwater and wetlands and. Uh, good evening, for the record, Phil Cordero from Allen and Major Associates, uh, practicing civil engineer. Um, so, as as the group mentioned, we we met last week and we presented them with a few options, which we had outlined here with this board a couple of weeks ago, where we sought to do a couple of things, which is provide additional treatment, provide some peak flow mitigation. Uh, you know, again, everything that Mr. Barber had outlined to you. So our initial intent for this development was we would introduce a separate holding tank on the property mm -hmm. that would hold the flows and they could be released at a time to be determined by the Department of Public Works that helped them with their capacity issues. The other alternative that we gave them or that we talked about was that we would put aeration blowers on our property to add oxygen mm -hmm. into the sewage to help them with their BOD demand. So the reason neither one of those really pan out is our, given the topography of the site, the very reason we're here is the hardship of topography, the installation of the tank would entirely be in groundwater, which is susceptible to further leakage and further inflow and infiltration problems. So now we're sort of adding to the very concerns that they outlined for us, and we think it would not be prudent to install a tank in, in that fashion. At the same time, installing the holding tank would require us to introduce some sort of pumped element, which we are prepared to do, but introducing pumps into the equation now introduces a management situation where we have mechanical means that we are basically a private operating pump station that adds additional complexities and challenges that have to be consistently and further coordinated with DPW, which further introduces the complexity. The aeration, while functional and a possibility, essentially makes us a private treatment plant, which we believe is not the intent of what the town wants. Uh, obviously, the town is doing a great job managing their systems, albeit the problems that they've noted. I don't think they want all of us little developers, little projects, having these package plants around town. And I think, I know that all the gentlemen have stepped out of the room for the moment, uh, but I think Mr. Almy had put it forward that they agreed with all of these physical constraints and none of them really panned out as a, as a solid idea. Um, so what it really comes down to from a fundamental civil engineering perspective 
is the sewage that's generated from this site, regardless of this particular use, this variance, whatever gets developed here, it is most practical to be added into the sewer system, the town system, and we really need to be talking about providing mitigation in addition to the infiltration fees, the standard connection fees, providing some compensation to the town, which was the substance of the discussion uh, that everybody had. So I'm happy to talk technically. I apologize, everybody behind oh, no, no. me has walked out, but happy to answer any technical questions on it for you. Does anyone have any questions? I have no questions. So basically, rather than spending the money on site, you would give the money to the town and they'll correct. Do it and so we have to deal with it. Yes, thank you for putting it in. Are those you going words. back negotiation? What? That's correct. Your so system's going to cost you twenty-five thousand dollars, but the town thinks it's two and a half million. So we we <laughs> <laughs> you've done this. So we 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 actually talked in those those exact terms, not those literal numbers, right. to say okay. a tank would cost this, the blowers would cost this. Mm -hmm. There's a number there. We'd rather give that to you than put I it in the system. And, and now it's just reaching conclusion on that final number. And the cost benefit in the end might be better doing it that way anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we think so, obviously. We, we, we would Even for the town, from the town's yes. perspective. Yes, yes. No, I, I agree. Okay. The, the town has put forth, and again, they've, they've stepped out. They've, they've generator, generated their list of wish list items for, um, to increase capacity and treatment, et cetera, at the plant. Certainly, we can't afford those. But one of the particular elements was, was additional blower capacity. Our money could go directly towards that, and it directly affects what was identified to us, the BOD, as a, as a primary concern here. Great. So I guess we're going to call upon Mr. Bobrowski to come back, and probably I think he's going to be asking for another date. Our next date is January 10th. Do you think that that would be a, a sufficient amount of time? Uh, so I, I think what we were waiting on is to have the DPW meeting, which unfortunately occurs tomorrow morning, just after this meeting. I think once that happens, we'll see you at the very next meeting subsequent to that. So why don't I go get them for sure. you? I'll be right back. President. Michael Maduros. Michael. I'd like to recuse myself and sit down over there to express our opinion about you want to recuse yourself from this case? Recuse, I've, I've done it recuse, but I'd like to sit down over there and express the, our concern also about this Come development on. because we are the neighbors. There's I can't hear him. There's a meeting tomorrow with DPW. Yeah. We can go. You can go to the hearing tomorrow if you'd like to. The hearing's tomorrow morning at 7.30, doctor. Attorney Bobrowski, yes. the floor is yours. You can go to the meeting tomorrow. Thank you. Dr. So I think the next thing uh, sort of leading in the direction of you need another date. We had urged the gentleman not to come without an agreement back to the board this evening. And we, we, we really tried hard to persuade them that that was appropriate. And we're just out in the hallway throwing numbers around. Um, I, I think what we're trying to do is establish a contribution for Mr. Steen in the vicinity of 100,000 plus or minus. And that includes 75,000 for the uh, airflow device that they need in order to take down the BOD level. That's number two on the shopping list here. Uh, it's listed as a, a biofilter uh, blower. I'll let you guys work that out. Right, you, exactly. You just, I mean, uh, January 10th, is that enough time for you? Or would you rather be put on the 24th? I think on their right. next meeting is they didn't next put it on the agenda for the DPW board meeting. You need to ask them when their meeting is going to be. Their meeting's going to be tomorrow. No, it's not on the agenda for tomorrow. It's not on the agenda for tomorrow. It's, we have an item on the agenda for discussion. We are also quite capable of having a special meeting. We've done that once this year when the circumstances warrant it. This is an important effort on the petitioner's part, on your part, on our part. We committed that in two meetings, two months, we'd be back, and we will make that happen. So January 24th? Well, 24th, I think is, I think 24th. Or what, is that the next meeting of the 10th? The next one is the 10th. We don't have anything no, no, on for the- to, What's the, oh, we don't have anything in January except the 10th. The 10th and the 24th. The 24th. 24th, that's what I meant. January 24th. But you said when's the next one? The next no, one that's one, tw I think 24th is more reasonable. They need to go back and negotiate, that's get fine. back on the board, and uh, the next week is probably dead. I'm not gonna have internet in Antarctica, and that's where I am on the 24th. So oh. they need to meet with us before I leave on the 8th right. of, of uh, January, and preferably the first week of the year. And we need to nail this down so that somebody besides me can stand before you on the 10th and tell you that we've got a deal or we don't got a deal. 
All right. We're talking the 10th. And if you, need an ex if you need to continue it, just request it by written letter. We'll take it, okay? As long as you agree to sign whatever documents and to ensure that we can extend the date. I always like communicating always with have. Michelle. You always so. have, I know. That's why I don't have a problem with your word. Um, we prepared to make an offer that the board might consider, and the board can s simply pick up the baton. Are you going to do this every time somebody comes before you with a large project? No, that's yeah. in the back of my mind. It has Absolutely. been in the back of my mind that we're gonna, that's something we might have to. I don't know. I mean, I, that's well beyond the statutory that criteria. This has been going on for 10 years. During that time, we already approved several uh, large size projects and, and it's know, never been brought to our attention you know. but I'd rather not have this become part of the consideration that we have to make on each and every one of these I really wouldn't but if that's what where it's going to head then obviously we're going to take a look at it and I'm not in a position to say one way or the other it, it's just a shame that we have a system in the state that the last guy coming pays the fee for everybody who slipped by before him and that's essentially where we are well, you're probably not going to be the last one. Yeah. But. No, that's my point. You're going to have to do this again and again and again. So we're prepared to take a condition that we're going to pay $100,000 in some contribution. Uh, they can divvy it up any way they want. Whatever they want. We'd rather you guys be able to exactly. work it out. Whatever you work out with them, I feel much more comfortable. I appreciate Absolutely. that. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Agai, you said you recused yourself in this case. I have recused, but as a neighbor, I have an opinion to share. Okay. He's a neighbor. What? Oh. But he has an opinion issue, so he says he's recused he himself. Well, yeah. my, my name is Rahim Agai, but basically there are other properties that are vacant at the present time, and they are in the process of hopefully sometimes to be uh, developed. The question is, is the town going to consider to see, I mean, to evaluate, to see how much more properties and lands are possible that are being being uh, developed or for future, and what is the impact of this project on the other side that are at the present time vacant and do not have any plan for future? Thank you. Thank you, Doc. I can't answer that question for you, but I can understand your concern. All right, so um, are we gonna entertain a motion to continue this thing to January 10th? Yeah. It, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman, before you do that, would it, would it make sense to hear from our expert, Barry Fogel, who is available by Zoom right now? Uh, what would he like to add? He'd like to explain the intricacies of the 80% uh, management rule. Is he the one that wrote the decision? The, the yes. Last? Okay, good, yes. I'd like to hear from him. Okay. I don't know how to arrange that, but... Uh, I think he's right there. There you go. I'm going to turn around so I can see. If you could just speak Hi, nice and loud. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Good, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Barry Fogel from Keegan Whirl, and I'm representing the petitioner. Uh, would I be able to share my screen and have that be seen? I, 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 uh, someone's going to do it. The gentleman out back, I'm sure he's heard. Uh, Mr. Manee, Mr. Manees, did you hear that? Yeah, I'm sure he did. Yes. yes, you can share the screen. And can you let me know when you're able to see what's on the screen? Yes, we can. We can. Somewhat. You're able to see that? I can't read it from where I'm, from my vantage point here, unfortunately. Okay, I'll watch. So this, this is, I just want to point out quickly, this is the current permit for the wastewater treatment facility issued by EPA. And it's effective April 1st. In this permit, what I've highlighted here is that there is a rolling average flow of 4.2 million gallons a day. That's the average monthly flow. There's no maximum daily limit. You'll see there, I don't know if you can see where my cursor is moving, but there's no daily limit. And so the average monthly flow is 4.2 million gallons a day. I'm now going to share a different document, which is the one that it was just presented to you, and bear with me. Well, I just want to give you by way of background also, I, I was with the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection in the Office of General Counsel, but also as the Regional Director of the Worcester Office, the central region which included responsibility for wastewater treatment facilities. 
I'm not an engineer and I'm not a wastewater plant operator, but I'm familiar with these permits. And what you're seeing on this graph that was just shown to you, if you're able to see it, it's the one that you were referring to. Is that page five? This is page five. Okay. This, this line at the top, the 4.2, that's the red line, is referred to in this report as the design daily average flow. That's not what it is. There is no design daily average flow. There's a monthly average, which is the name of the slide, okay? He skipped over, the gentleman, Mr. Barber, skipped over page six. And that's the most important slide in the report. This shows that between January of 2018 and this past uh, August, that the blue line, which is the annual average flow, has been well below that 4.2 million gallon a day limit. Now, on a particular basis, on, on a rare occasion, it's gone over the 80% limit. But, so I want you to, to know, this is the actual meaningful blue line and how far below the permit limit it is. I will now switch you back one last time to the permit, the EPA permit. Next to this, now if you see it now, back to that table, next to this reference to the average flow, there's a footnote four. And in the EPA permit, pardon me while I scroll down, footnote four says, I've highlighted it here. Oh. The limit is a rolling annual average calculated as the arithmetic mean of the monthly average flow and then the monthly average flows of the previous 11 months. That's what is shown on that slide six. This facility does not exceed the permit. The relevant permit limit for them allowing new connections, which was explained in Mr. Bobrowski's letter to you describing the statute and the case law, they're far below and far away from meeting or exceeding rather the 80% on a monthly average that would require them to do anything to start changing the plant for EPA's purposes. I've been telling the applicant, I don't understand what all of this is about. The BOD and the TSS has no permit limit that's relevant to this project. And I'm here to encourage you to, to not look at the way this summary report was presented to you to suggest that this facility somehow is exceeding its limits and is not in a position to allow this as a new connection. And I urge you to do your work under the ZBA approval to issue the approval and leave it to the wastewater treatment plant to operate in its own mechanism to access, assess any fees and to work something out with the applicant. But not that I want to get crosswise with attorney Bobrowski, but I would urge you to approve this permit if it meets all of the standards that you've got to apply and leave it to the treatment plant operators to put the squeeze on the applicant if they want for some mitigation fees that can be used for improvements but I do not see anything in the data to suggest that this plant cannot accommodate this additional flow from this project. Thank you. Hey, well, I'm gonna direct your attention to page nine. Do you have page nine of that report? I can't hear you. I think he's looking for it. Yeah, I'm gonna share the screen with you on that report. Page nine. Yes, there it is. So I understand that a lot of the concern that Mr. Barber has has to do with the BOD concentration. So if you take the third dot that's there, it says 72% of monthly BOD concentration exceeded 80% of the design flow. Is it your opinion that that's not accurate? I don't know what he's, I don't know how you compare a BOD concentration to a design flow. There's a permit limit for BOD and there's the permit has 
criteria for if BOD is exceeded, um, bear with me for one second, uh, in the permit, the BOD limit is 30 milligrams per liter as an average monthly and average weekly is 45 milligrams per liter. So this table, I don't know what the, this is in million gallons a day. Here's the milligrams per liter. The limits are down here. The, the limits I just read to you in milligrams per liter, and I, uh, pardon me, I, I know I'm toggling back and forth here, but let me share my screen. So I'm sharing my screen now. This is the BOD limit here, right? You see the parameter BOD, 30 milligrams per liter as an ab monthly average, 45 milligrams per liter as an average on a weekly basis. And going back to that table, these are the BOD concentrations all they're showing you, this is the influent. The discharge limitations are way down here. I don't have any information to indicate that they're exceeding their discharge limit. This page nine talks about the BOT concentration exceeding something having to do with design flow. Design flow has nothing to do with their discharge limit. So I, I think they're comparing apples and grapefruit. I don't understand what they mean by that table nine sir okay i think it's presented to you to obfuscate things and to create the impression that there's a problem that needs to be addressed by this project and i thoroughly disagree with that and i have not seen anything to suggest otherwise or heard anything from the wastewater ask, treatment plan yeah. um the the document that you referred to first that showed numbers, uh, not the one that was prepared by the Dartmouth DPW, where does that document come from? That document is, uh, bear with me. This document is, so because of the size of the treatment facility in Dartmouth, it, it qualifies for rather than having its own independent permit because it discharges less than 4.5 million gallons a day, it is subject to a, a general permit that EPA has issued for medium sized wastewater treatment facilities, if you can see that. Okay. So this is the same permit that would apply to any other medium sized and the numbers the numbers that appear in that document that you referenced to 3.2 where do those numbers come from They're set by EPA Oh so for, they don't come from the town of Dartmouth Oh no they've been set by the US EPA for discharges from wastewater treatment facilities of a size okay. similar to Dartmouth I, I understand thank you Sure is it possible you can forward us a copy of that permit? Absolutely. Thank you. So, gentlemen, anyone else have any questions? Uh, Are you thoroughly confused, Bob? I... <laughs> sort of. Sort of. <laughs> well, I am. Thank you for allowing Attorney Fogel to speak. No, no problem. Well, I think you guys are close to an agreement, my understanding, so, right? Well, I hope that makes it closer. I'm hoping. Um, it's just that, I, and it's, it's not uncommon when you have experts that have, you know, different opinions. No, I, I opinions, agree. Right? We deal with it yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad they're working together, and hopefully next Hopefully time, between now and the next time we see each other, you, you guys have. will be having some sort of an agreement that then we can move forward to a normal course of business. Thank you. So January, we agreed on January 10th? 
So yes. I'd entertain a motion. I need someone to make a motion that we agree to continue the matter to January 10th with the understanding they're going to sign all the necessary extensions. I make a motion that we continue variance case ZAV 23-6 to January 10th to allow the applicant to finalize or work out an agreement with the DPW. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you. Good See evening. you next year, gentlemen. Christmas, happy Merry New Year. Christmas. Christmas. And a happy New Year. Yes, they are. Excuse me? They are. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm still with it. I'm still with it. <laughs> and I'm thoroughly confused. You do. All right. We're still on the record? Yes, we are. Moving on. The next case is special per I think it's two, two part, right? Yeah. It's a special permit, ZSP 23-6. The petitioner applicant is Chris Imbriglio. Hopefully I didn't butcher that too badly. The subject property is located at 12 Main Avenue, also known as Map 164, Lot 24. It's located within the General Business Aquifer Protection Overlay District, Zone 3. The matter was legally advertised in, on November 22nd and November 29th of this year. Make a motion that we waive the reading of the brother's list. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The petitioner in this case is seeking a special permit to build an addition, a first floor bedroom, kitchen extension, room over garage onto an existing single family residence in a general business district and aquifer protection overlay district, zone three, which does not comply with the town zoning bylaws for lot coverage. Article 28, section 375-28.5B, eight prohibited uses and lot coverage above 10% or lot coverage above 2,500 square feet of any lot, whichever is greater. Given that they're companion cases, I'm going to read the next one into mm -hmm. the record as well, mm -hmm. gentlemen. It's special, per well, it says special permit. It's, it's actually a variance. Variance ZAV 23-15. Petitioner is Chris Embriglio, also the owner. The subject property is the same. The property was legally advertised. I'll entertain a motion on this one, gentlemen. Uh, I'll make a motion that we waive the reading of the abutters list. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. The petitioner is seeking a variance to build an addition, first floor bedroom, kitchen extension, room over the garage, onto an existing single family residence in a general business district and aquifer protection overlay district zone three, which does not comply with the, toting, with the town's zoning bylaws for setbacks. Article 18, section 375-18.4B, Article 33, section 375-33.2, minimum setback dimensions of 40 feet from street lines or vehicular easement lines and 20 feet from all perimeter property lines. So let me read into the record any town comments. We got a letter from the building inspector. It's addressed to Christopher Imbriglio. It's dated October 30th. It says, I've reviewed your application. At this time, your proposal cannot be approved due to noncompliance with the current zoning regulations. You are proposing to build an addition onto an existing single family residence in a general business district and aquifer protection overlay district zone three, which does not comply with the town zoning bylaws for setbacks and lot coverage. A variance and special permit must be applied for and secured from the Zoning Board of Appeals in order to proceed with your request. Your application is being denied under the following sections of the Dartmouth Zoning Bylaw. General Business District, Article 18, 375-18.4b. Buildings of structure shall be set back as defined in Article 33. And Article 33, 375-33.2, minimum setback dimensions, General Business District, 40 feet from street lines and 40 feet from perimeter of lot lines, and also refers to the aquifer protection overlay district. So that's the reason that they have to come for us today. Let me see if there are any other comments. We have a comment from DPW. It says a submitted site plan dated 6-12-2023 does not show any proposed roof runoff infiltration. The plan shows a tabulation of allowed existing and proposed lot coverage. The allowed lot coverage is stated as 10%, existing as 35.7%, and 
and proposed as 47.9, predominant zoning bylaw aquifer protection overlay district 375-28.7 performance standards. B, commercial, industrial, institutional, and multifamily residential recharge and stormwater management requirements. It says any change of use, new construction, alteration, or reconstruction encompassing more than 50% of the existing building or an increase of the total building footprint on a lot by 10% of 500 square feet, whichever is greater, during any three-year period shall require recharge from any primary buildings. Increasing lot coverage by more than 5% above that allowed during any three-year period shall require the recharge of runoff from all primary buildings if roof runoff is already being recharged in the area of expansion or its equivalent shall be subject to stormwater management requirements. The planning department. The property is within the zone three of the aquifer protection over the district. See article 28 the zoning bylaw. Well, thank you. All right. So at this time, I'm going to call upon the petitioner or the representative I see before me, Attorney Aspen. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, Attorney Matthew Aspen with an office at 255 County Street in Somerset on behalf of Christa, Christopher Imbriglio. He's here with his wife, Cheryl Lynn, and the builder tonight, uh, Mr. Simmons. Um, I was retained a couple of weeks ago, so I'm trying to pull together uh, different aspects of this of this project. I've dealt with Mr. Simmons. I've talked to him over the last few days. I've talked to the engineer, who is uh, Don Medeiros, who is from Little Compton. Mr. Medeiros couldn't do this, the uh, special, the um, stormwater review for the DEP as suggested by the DPW because he wasn't, he wasn't from Massachusetts. So out, uh, out back um, from a Kushnet, is that right, Mr. Sim? From Lakeville has submitted a plan to uh, DEP and I'm not sure DEP's acting on it. They've done their test pits last week. But I first want to address, uh, just by way of background, um, Mrs. Briglio unfortunately lost her father a short time ago. Her elderly mother sold her house and is moving in with them. So the purpose of uh, the expansion of the house is to accommodate um, Mr. Imbriglio's mother-in-law, Mrs. Imbriglio, uh, Mrs. Imbriglio's mother, uh, by expanding, putting a bedroom on, a small family room, and to expand the kitchen to give them more uh, living area. Now, I think one, one critical aspect of this petition that I bring to the board's attention is my client did connect to the sewer system um, in September of 2023, which I think is, is critical in the aquifer. Uh, zone that they did connect. What this leaves is a very large leaching field. So, um, which is going to be, according to the initial plan submitted, is, is they've they've designated it as abandoned. Now, Mr. Medeiros, you read into the record uh, Mr. Bisco's letter saying there's a couple of problems, there's uh, setback problems with this property. As as the uh, boards, I'm sure, aware, this is a pre-existing non-conforming use. Um, on, on this particular property. So the variance we're looking for, obviously the statutory language, it goes to the shape department soil conditions of the land, but as I'm sure the board knows that the uh, the structure, the location of a pre-existing structure has been deemed in case law to create a hardship for the purposes of a variance request. And that's exactly what's happened here as far as the front yard is concerned. Um, the front yard, as you can see from the plan, is 12 plus feet with a proposed with a proposed construction. That would, uh, what's been referred to as a bump out there's an existing concrete slab already there that's pre-existing. My clients aren't expanding on that. They're building just a, um, an entryway to the house there and bringing the stairway, the steps I should say, up to code. So the extent of the variance is really to bring the, the stairs up to code and not increase the footprint what's, up, what's already there. There's no, granted there's no structure there, but the concrete barrier is, the concrete slab is already present on the property. It's been there for, I think, decades um, that they, when they bought the house. The setbacks I'm looking at, too, um, there seems to be some confusion with my client. The northerly side of the plan indicates there's only 19 feet for the boundary. In speaking with the engineer, there's apparently some it looks like some neighborhood encroachments on this property. Uh, it looks a little bit of a mess out there, quite frankly. It looks like there's a shed, a fence that may be crossing boundary lines. But the engineer says that the north, the north uh, boundary line from the proposed addition is 19 plus or minus feet. Now, in the business zone, the requirement for the side yard would be 20 feet. So I, in, in, 
in the uh, abundance of caution, I'm requesting that if the board's inclined to grant the variance, I'd request it be for all setback requirements because I can't tell you with absolute certainty, even though the, the surveyor says it's 19 feet, that it's not 20 feet. Mr. Imbriglio believes it's 25 feet to the border, but obviously we have to go by the, uh, we have to go by the submission on the plan. Mm -hmm. So um, we're looking for those, uh, and if I can just check my plan for a second, I think the backyard requirement, because this is a relatively small lot, so uh, the backyard requirement would also need to be, no, need to be waived because it's only 25 feet or so, 25 plus or minus feet. So those are the variance requests we're looking for. Um, if you notice, I would suggest if you notice the surrounding area, it's, it's quite a bit of wooded area. There are commercial uh, businesses in the area. I don't think there's any detriment to the, to the neighborhood or the abutters to this property as, as evidenced by nobody being here tonight. Um, I would request, and, and again, the builder's here to answer any questions or my clients answer any questions, that with respect to the variance request, it's a de minimis request and it's the least request under the law that we could require for the, um, for the requested relief. Um, to add on in addition to this property. If you have any questions, I'll, I'll address the aqu aquifer um, se second if that's a more appropriate. You want to do it now, gentlemen, or are we going to ask some questions? Uh, let's do the aquifer too. I mean, this the is the well. first. Uh, we'll move on. Sure. Yeah, the. the the aquifer, this is, um, because this is in, obviously, the, the aquifer district, we have that, uh, the provision is outlined in Mr. Bisco's letter about lot percentage coverage. What you should know. You said Mr. Bisco. Who's, who's Mr. Bisco? He was the temporary building inspector. Oh. Uh, I right? Thought the, I thought the letter that I got was, let me see what it was. Joe Bisco. That's what it said on my was it, letter. Was it Braga? Oh, Bis Braga. oh I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Joe yeah. Bisco was the full... <laughs> <laughs> Joe Braga, I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Joe, B Joe Bisco is a former Fall River building inspector. I'm sorry. Okay. Braga, Mr. Well, Braga. Me there well, JB, same thing. You right. know, um, I, I apologize. Right. Um, maybe I need to apologize to Mr. Braga, too, for calling him Mr. Bisco. I, I'm sorry about that. Because um, I've dealt with Mr. Bisco over the decades, quite frankly. Um, but. He refers to the uh, aqu aquifer protection overlay district. Well, well, my presentation isn't as complex as the prior one. Um, the the aquifer district is a little is a little unnerving. So, what what's been recommended by the DPW obviously is a site review by the DEP. Now, the DEP, as I indicated earlier, has done their test pits. Um, according to Mr. Mr. Simmons, who I've talked to about this this project. The, the comments by DEP and what we expect to come down the pipeline is that the uh, water table in this particular area is set at 22 inches, which makes, which makes it impossible to do a, a, a recharge system. We can't do a recharge system there. So what, we're look, what we'll be ultimately looking for, and, I, and again, unfortunately, like I said, I just got involved and I'm trying to put the pieces together, but, he t but Mr. Simmons tells me DEP just did their test pits last week. So I don't think they filed their report and clearly they left, so they're not here on this petition tonight. Um, what I'm ultimately gonna be requesting from the board is the granting of the special permit because you should note that the underlying, the pre-existing condition took up 35% roughly of the uh, imperv impervious uh, area. This is uh, this total will be 47 percent. So it's not it's not an egregious amount of area we're looking for. It's really the minimum requirement. Like I said, the the addition is not is not enormous, but I understand the size of the lot and and everything else. But with that leaching field there, I don't think that the intent of the aquifer bylaw and the stormwater drainage bylaw. I don't think it's really. I, I think with, with the with the prior septic that's been abandoned, the leaching field, that the, you're going to have any problems in that area anyway, because the water is going to, the water is going to drain. There's not going to be an excessive uh, drain, you know, drainage into that system. So I think what we're going to be looking for is a waiver from this board on the recharge system, because we can't, we can't put it in. And as I understand the comments, and, and again, I'm, I'm telling you hearsay on a third, le on a second level. Mr. Simmons tells me in his conversation with the DEP, they said, well, gee, they, they're going to need to exempt this because the water levels are, 
is at 22 inches, so they can't put the recharge recharge system in. So, and again, I don't. It, it doesn't appear to me in my review of this. And again, Mr. Medeiros, I concur with you. I'm not an expert in this area, but considering that it's a it's a residence in a business area, and in a number of other areas right next door, they they were telling me that across the street there's there's. Uh, 90% of the lot across the street, which is in the aquifer, also the commercial building, and I'm not sure what it is, maybe my client can expand on that, is paved. So it's, it's the area in and of itself has been, has been encroaching a little bit on the aquifer system, but this particular case is, is not. Under the, under the, um, the uh, town's uh, stormwater drainage bylaws, the, uh, this would be considered, a, I, I think, the DEP is going to consider it a minor, and they can waive the requirements under their, uh, under their provisions, of, under, under the town's provisions in their section. It's, uh, I can give it to you. It's section three of the stormwater drainage on, on page eight of the bylaw. It says administrative review and approval required a minor stormwater permit must be obtained prior to the commencement of a residential land disturbing activity of less than one acre of land. And this is, this is clearly substantially less than one acre of land. And the minor permit may be waived by the DBW directors uh, discretion for land disturbance of less than 5,000 square feet. So I don't think there's going to be a disturbance of this land because um, it's, in, it's in the um, the eastern part of the property, obviously the backyard, and the lot's only 10,000 square feet. So I think it forms it, it falls into those provisions, and I and I believe that if we get the once we get the report from the DEP and they tell us that, that we have a level of 22 inches, that again I, I would I would suggest to the board that it's appropriate that you grant a waiver. Uh, grant the special permit for the lot coverage and a waiver of a discharge system. Um, and, it, and I think that's what's going to be the ultimate outcome from DEP, based on what I'm hearing. I mean, I, didn't, I haven't heard that personally because nothing's been put together by them yet because they just dug the test per, uh, pit, uh, permit test holes, so they haven't issued their report yet. All right. Um, gentlemen, any questions? I can just say this at the outset, and we're, we're going to reserve for, they can, if they have any questions for you. I've never waived. I've been on this board, I don't know, about seven years now, more or less, Michelle? Longer than that. Longer than that, Ten. okay. So uh, we've never waived an inf infiltration requirement uh, in an aquifer district. Not to say that we wouldn't uh, if, there, if the right set of circumstances mm -hmm. posed itself. You know, we understand that there are limitations, right? I think we, we all as a board, people would find that and determine that we are try to take a rational approach to this and understand that there are times where there are unique situations. Could this be the one? It might very well be. I don't know. But I don't feel comfortable without having some DPW no, I, yeah. to, to, to let us know and say, yeah, these people are really not left with much of a situation because even if they put in the system, the system is virtually useless. So I wouldn't want to make them do something just for the sake of complying with, 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 a, with a bylaw or with a regulation when it doesn't make any sense. The, the intent of that bylaw is not going to be accomplished anyway. No, I understand that. And by the, by the way, the, the bylaw... Um, which I'm sure you're aware is mandatory for the 24 inches. So if it can't be put, it, 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 that's why I was requesting the waiver. It cannot, the recharge system cannot be put in at 22 inches, is my understanding. And I read the by, the way I read the bylaw, it says, it says shall be 22 feet below structure level to the water table. It shall be 24 inches. So I, it, I don't think it, it I don't think, and you know, maybe you can expand on that, but I don't think the bylaw, it's possible to, ex to uh, comply with the bylaw, as I understand it. All right. Well, I always defer to this gentleman. He may, That's why I'm looking right. at him. He's, <laughs> he's an integral part of this board, and he helps us out quite often. Uh, so, Attorney Aspen, I think I agree with you. This is, this is an existing, this is an expansion of existing non-conforming use, first of all, because that's a house that is on the commercial property, you know? So... Uh, the setbacks is n are not a big issue. You know, we've granted those with those areas, and you know they're pretty minor. I understand what you're doing to the front, uh, to the side. You're almost there, but I don't like the 19 plus or minus. I mean, if this is a surveyed property and stand by a registered land surveyor, if he's confident it's 19 feet, put the 19 feet. You know, uh, I don't have an issue with the project. The infiltration, I don't know why DEP is involved in this. The only, pe the only person that would be involved with this would be a soil evaluator 
that it's licensed by DEP to, to do a perk test just uh, for groundwater and perk. Uh, is there, I don't think there's wetlands on the property. I missed unless there's something that no. DEP wouldn't be involved. All you need to do is hire an engineer, uh, a soil evaluator who's going to do a perk and figure out how high the groundwater table, and then you submit that to DEP. Now, you're right. I mean, there's regulations that you have to be, that you have to have three feet separation from high groundwater table. Then your system, you probably end up filling five feet on. It's not feasible. The whole area is paved. A lot of the commercial properties around. We understand that. But also, as attorney. Madeira said, this, I'm not sure with the waiver, if this is a waiver from us, we look at it when it comes back. I don't have any experience of granting. Well, I think they and use the term exemption. That would be more like a variance. I don't know if it, a waiver. I think that would be a variance, I would think, right? You said oh. it could be an exemption. I'd have to No, the that. exemption, that's something, that's for the stormwater, that's something different from, from DPW. I, and you can check with DPW. If they have the authority to exempt this, by all means, have, but, them, have them bless it for us. Well, that's what we're hoping for. That's what, right. and Mr. I, Simmons maybe can comment on that because they said, what he told me is they said they should grant, and he used the term to me, and I, and again, I'm not, you know, that they should grant an exemption. And that's what he said to me. So I don't know, maybe he can, maybe he yeah, can. Uh, yeah, before we, I think, let's continue because I saw some comments. I think I would suggest either you sit down with, with Paul Duart or uh, Mr. Simmons, whoever, We'll go to DPW, sit down with Mr. Duart. He had some comments on the plans. Yes. For the, because you need to figure the percentage. We're here. We're not approving a stormwater design system. We're here zoning in terms of lot coverage. So we need to know exactly what the existing lot coverage on the lot and what's the proposed lot coverage. And the difference, if you need a special permit, we can grant that. That's our jurisdiction. Yeah, but the, the, it seems like the calculations, or from the comments, I when I looked at the plans, that some of the stuff that's included in the in the lot in the existing lot coverage shouldn't be included. And also, when you do that, you have some concrete uh, structures on site that you 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 took, you know, the septic system and all that stuff. That's going to help you because that's an existing lot coverage that you're taking out. So right. actually, in this case. You're replacing it with that's impervious, so I exactly. think it's going to make a difference. But there's also options. I'm not sure. I'm not going into that. That you can replace some of the existing concrete with maybe crushed stone, so you can meet the requirement. If you can't meet the to stay within the existing, so you don't increase the lot coverage. I, I, impervious lot coverage. I mean, there's options there, but no, I, talk to... Talk yeah, to I, will, I will do that, and I, I agree with you. I, we looked at that, and the amount that's been deducted is, is somewhat de minimis. So the lot coverage was 30, about 35% before the proposed addition. With the proposed addition and the exemptions that they indicate on the plan that they've taken out, it's 47%. The, th the problem with the, well, not the problem, the way the bylaw is written, if you're over 10%, even if you're a pre-existing non-conforming use, we have to get this special permit. We have right. no choice. But I'm yes. not sure, I have to check if we have the jurisdiction to, to waive the, the infiltration. Well, the because way I looked at it, quite honestly, I, I looked at what the suggestions were um, on, the, on the plan, and it, and it looks to me like it's a condition for a water recharge system of the special permit. Because without the special permit, you can't, there's no need to get a water discharge system because we can, we can't expand we can't expand the pro, the lot coverage. So it, it appear even though it's a little convoluted, it appeared to me that the granting of the special permit would be conditional on a water recharge system. Absolutely, right. we, we will. But we right, need but that's in your purview. But we need the right numbers. That's what I'm telling you. I, the right numbers between the existing and the proposed because it seems there's some some discrepancies here with. Mr. Well, what he's Paul. saying is he can't propose it because he doesn't have an infiltration system because he can't put it in because of the groundwater. That's what he's purporting right now. Right, but it's, is I that, mean. Is that correct? Yeah, no, that is correct. That is correct. I, no matter what, 
no matter what, to do any project right now, if they wanted to put a technically a doghouse, if it's considered a structure in Dartmouth, I'm not sure. They would have to get a special permit for lot coverage because they're over 10% according to the bylaw. So, so to me, to, and, and again, I, I defer to you, I'm not an engineer, but to me, if they started with 35%, which is on the plan, and they're going to 47%, that's a 12% increase in lot coverage. Either way, whether it was 1%, Anything they build on that property, they need to get a special permit. I mean, that's, that's a given. What I'm requesting is a waiver of the condition, and again, I'm sorry to interrupt, a waiver of the condition of a water recharge system because they can't put it in. And again, you need the number from DP, the DPW on the test pit on whether or not it's, it's two feet or greater to the structure floor. I, I, I believe it. I know the area. I, I know well, the, how, you know, I'm, I'm not questioning that. But... I don't know if we have the authority to give you, which I, I need to look into that. Of course, with the well, zoning board of appeal, read the bylaw. Yeah. And read it the might bylaw. be, uh, maybe not a waiver, maybe a variance, which is you have the ground, we have the, the statutory requirements that you can meet it because of the groundwater table. Yeah, I, and I, phys, you know. Yeah, I, I know it's I know it's a little but convoluted, says, but I don't think it's a variance. It says an exception, but does it say who determines whether or not the exception is granted in that in that bylaw? It, it's not about well, what it this. says. It's, it's, I know. Well, what I, I can read it to you again. It uh, says it's a stormwater reg. It's a stormwater. It's, it's a stormwater. stormwater yeah. The stormwater bylaw, but that's that has to. You know, I think that's. Hey, by all means, I mean you can ex you can explore that that option. Well, don't don't forget the recommendations refer to the stormwater bylaw. I want to I want to make that clear. If you look at the plan, it, it says on the plan, with the comments. Let me just make, I want to make sure I get it exactly right, but it says on the plan with the comments that a stormwater permit review form shall be submitted to the DPW engineering department. So both bylaws are coming into effect, the zoning bylaw and the stormwater permit. So if they, if, if the stormwater permit review deems, going back to the stormwater, that you can't do it. The, well, you can't do it. A minor permit may be waived at the DPW's direction. So I think... Then at that point, if they get that, saying that they can't, then, then we can just grant it based on well, the percentage. That's what, he, that's what I'm up. saying. Yeah. Get the percentage and we approve the special permit right. and we, we always leave it up to DPW. We don't issue stormwater permits here. We say you have to, it's like you have to get a building permit from the building department. We don't tell you we're approving your building plans. You still have to file with the building department. So you go back to DPW and DPW say, no, we can't do this. And they have the right. jurisdiction to do it. They can, otherwise, you're probably coming back here for something. Well, I think I that's know. the, I no, think I think I that's the, out. like the, you did on the prior permit. I think that's kind of the procedure. You guys, uh, all the time, the zoning boards get advice from the police chief. They get advice from the fire department. I would suggest that this is similar with the D, with the DPW. Okay. Because, you know, the aquifer, it's, it's a little, uh, Dartmouth is, other towns don't have a I zoning understand. board with jurisdiction <laughs> over the the uh, aquifer zone. Okay, it's confusing. It goes it to, a lot be, of times yeah, it goes I to know. the uh, conservation, yeah. mm -hmm. so it's a little it's a little convoluted. But again, I would request you act on the um, on the variances tonight if you can, because it's two separate permits. We historically have not done that unless we are going to grant both. We don't. We typically don't grant just one. Not to say that it's not going to happen. I, I have not. Uh, I tell you why I don't. I don't have an issue, and this is public, and I'm mm. sure all my colleagues, because this is not unusual. We've seen those cases all yeah. along, and we granted them. So it's not, a, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I don't. Limit it for the next hearing. The, the plans, I think, first of all, this is the plan of record. I think we do have a stamp on it, but we don't have a signature. So you need to get a signature on the you plan. You don't have a signature on the plan? No. So that's technically, that's why, <laughs> that's why. Well, I just found out today it was filed because the first plan was filed. Which is not big deal. If you can tighten up the 19 plus or minus, I mean, um, we don't typically like to have it open-ended. Also, you have a dimensions which this is going to help you because, you know, you should have the existing offset from the southerly side of the project, the house, to the property line, which is five feet. 
So this helps us with the decision because you're 19 feet. So there's already a structure that's existing non-conforming that sure. is five feet from the property line and the addition is gonna be 19, which is less detrimental. Sure. So, yeah. He's saying five, but we don't even know no, I'm, exactly. No, I'm what looking by eye. I yeah, can tell eye. my, right. which is somewhere around. So that yeah, he he emailed me that plan today. I just saw it today, and no, I, couldn't, I couldn't read it. It was too small, so I, I didn't know I didn't know what the uh, the side yard was. We have this happen. It's all not the, all the time, so we don't we don't take anything from. There is that. no how did oh there is no number there, right? There you just figured that. Well, oh, by eye, I'm looking at the yeah, scale. There's no I, side yard this, number you know, for the southern side because we like to put in the decision the. The current structure on the Sudley border is five feet away from the property line. The new addition will be 19, 19 or 12 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. but the stairs. So yeah. So it just goes to show that it's not any. It's not creating any greater conformity or nonconformity. It's not creating a greater nonconformity. Or more, it's not more detriment. Yes. Can I just ask the board one thing? The, I talked to the. I talked to the surveyor, the engineer myself, and he, they, did a, they did an actual survey of this property. And he said that, that 19 plus or minus and the 25 plus or minus for the backyard, that's the best they could do. That's it. Well, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, no, 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 that's it. Right. We'll give you an opportunity. You're going to go up and speak yeah. if you'd like. I, look, quick question. The, the, the addition has a different square footage than what's in the... the uh, in the existing lot coverage section. Did you notice that? Somebody did, because they made a note. Right. Yeah. That's why I'm, they the have to go back does? to. Mm -hmm. I I, yeah, this one right here. <laughs> can, I, can I come up and look at yeah, Helene's got, I think he's got a lot of that covered. I figure just want to let him go through it. That's the plan? No, this is the original plan. Oh. There should have been a subsequent plan with all those comments. Yeah, it's right there. You, you have the subsequent plan right there. That was just submitted. Oh, then I don't have a copy of this. Or maybe I do, and I just don't see it here. That was just submitted, and that, and that showed that I think he corrected everything on there. But I, but I understand the board's position. I'll, I will have the engineer put the side yard, uh, but I can tell you right now in talking to him, um, he used the word a mess out there as far as the meets and bounds. So he did a site survey and came up with this plan. There's some encroachments, nothing to do with this petition or anything else, but he did get... You know, and, and it's typical in, in no, deeds. I see it here on the easterly bound. There's a lot of different things that are sort of being respected as a boundary, especially maybe this concrete retaining wall. Yeah. And it's not even anywhere close. Right. It's the, the, the actual property line extends well into the abutter. Right. I, I get it. Well, it's right. not the first time we've seen That's, that either. Yeah. The fence on the, on the northerly side, my, my client tells me he has seven feet on the other side of that. So, I, yeah, I see the fence. Yeah, it so and it, the there. fence is crooked. It, comes, it looks like it comes across on the street, side, on the street line. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a mess over there, but nothing to affect these two petitions. Whatever the board's pleasure is, like I said, if you don't, if you don't want to act on the variances tonight, I just thought we'd streamline it for the next meeting. I think we can, we're going to be able to move forward on the next hearing date. It's just, I would ask you to, I, I think he's got a couple other things he wants to address with the plan. Do you want to, is there a couple other? No, I mean, just, yeah, so, so, I so mean, we make just, it clear just, so that yeah, they, they're not leaving here in the dark. So make sure the numbers add up on, on the plans. Yeah. You know, the, the existing, Lot coverage and the proposed lot sure. coverage, they reflect what's in the addition. You know, it's just the math. And then whatever the percentage is, put the percentage, you know. I mean, you're going from 35 to 45, whatever it is, and you're here for a special permit. But they can't get the 10% credit. I'm, I'm not, I'm right, just. Not gonna, if they don't do recharge, they can't get the 10% credit, right? No, no, he's not getting the, he's not, he's not accounting for 10%. He's not accounting for no. because he doesn't have a recharge system. No. Because you're able to get a 10% credit under our bylaw of the total square footage of the law, whatever that calculates to on, when doing the calculation, if you're doing a recharge. recharge. Because we, we, oh, we promote and we want to incentivize recharging. And what town. they're telling me, it's not, po it's it's not possible. It's different. Right? Yeah. I've been doing this for it, over it, seven years. And so have you seen one of these? We, we, It'd be we, interesting to see how we handle this. We, but a lot of it hinges hmm. on what the DPW is going to find after you submit this application. Absolutely. And what they're going to make a determination that maybe a recharge system is not feasible in this on this particular site. 15, and just, and just so you know, the board, j just so the board's aware, the, the Outback has completed a draft plan that was, that was handed to me tonight. And it's, but it's not, it hasn't, you know, it's not done yet. They haven't finished it yet. So that's kind of that's kind of where we are. So if you want to hold off on both, I'm not sure if the 10th would be would be 
enough time with the holidays to get the DPW in line? Mike, may I ask? I think another um, uh, concern, I make sure on your floor layout, your in-laws is not over 700, whatever the bylaws. I think, because we allow in-laws in Dartmouth, and I forgot what the number is, 700 square feet or 900 square feet? It might be in single residence A and single residence B district. I don't know if we also have it in the No, but this is an existing non-conforming structure. But don't forget, it's not an in-law request. It's not a permit sought for an in-law. It's, it's, there's just no- It's expansion of the house. It's just, ex, it's just it's expand, adding a bedroom. Okay. Uh, I thought you mentioned something about... No, I, I added a bedroom. They're expanding the kitchen and putting okay. a small family room. It's, it's still, okay. still a single family without an in-law. Yeah. Right. No, no we, we, <laughs> we allow <laughs> this uh, percentage. You don't want to go right. over no, because no, no. then you need a special permit. Or, then we need yeah. more. We okay. don't want to request more. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up, but that's okay. Mm. Um, just, no. just, as, no, just, just as an just, aside, the numbers still don't match. If you look at the number on the new plan, as the size of the addition, it says 1512, and in section eight, it says 1535. Okay. Yeah, see, I can't read the numbers. I don't have my glasses to read them. It didn't look like it was the, it was the right one to me. I but. couldn't read them with my glasses on when I got it. So, um, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to talk with the engineer to tighten it up. The 10th or the 24th, because we need to entertain a motion, and you may need to sign on behalf of the client. You need to sign some extension paperwork, Attorney Ashley. Sure. Right. Um, January? Yeah. No, I'll be here. I can't make December 24th. When? Except uh, the 24th is Christmas. Before that, she was going to move the, the meeting. Right? Didn't you ask me to move the meeting? The 24th would be great. Okay. The January 24th on the condition that Mr. Aspen, on behalf of his client, sign all the extension paperwork. I don't have it. <laughs> you, you can do it. Oh. Uh, I'll make a motion that we continue special permit uh, ZSP 23-6 and various. for the record, we didn't give anybody uh, oh, any that's true. We didn't give anyone an opportunity. Um, excuse me for a moment. I don't see anybody, but I just need to make sure Absolutely I go through not. it. Mm -hmm. So is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either in favor or against these two petitions? One is for a variance, and that is ZAV 23-15, and the other one is for the special permit, which is ZSP 23-6. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either in favor or against either of these two petitions? I can reflect. Uh, and put on the record that there's no one other than the two petitioners that are here for this evening, the President and Attorney Aspen. So now we can go forward with the motion. I apologize. I make a motion that we continue special permit ZSP 23-6 and uh, variance case ZAV 23-15 to uh, January 24th, 2024. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. I'd just like to tell the board, Michelle was incredibly, my, my son, who's my law partner, raved about the help that you gave him when he came down here in a blind fog to find out what was going on. Oh, and uh, if you know my son, he doesn't, he doesn't give out praise, especially to <laughs> me, but. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Aspen, and you have a nice holiday. Thank you. Yes. Have a great holiday. Holidays you. Uh, I'm sure we'll get there eventually, Mr. Aspen. I hope so. Thank you. Take a five-minute recess. All right. Um, you want to take a five-minute recess? Yeah, we need to change. All right. Numbers, right. I wonder if he had any right. Back on the record. Continuing on to the... Last matter that's on for tonight's meeting is Special Permit ZSP 23-3, which was continued from November 29, 2023. The petitioner applicant is Gabriel Baruti. 
The owner is George Abi Rashed. The property is located at 610 State Road. It's in the general business district. The matter has already been advertised. We waived the reading of the abutters list. I've already read the, into the uh, record the concerns that we may have had. This matter has already been continued at least on two occasions that I can remember. Uh, at this point in time, I'm going to call upon the petitioner or their representative to come forward, identify themselves on the record. Good evening. Uh, George Abi Rashed. Hi, how are you? Good, you? We almost know each other on a first name basis. <laughs> All right, so um, I've noticed that there were some changes made to the plan. Um, there was an additional dimension that was put on there for the distance from the building to the property line on the westerly bound. There was also another one for the northerly bound that was added. And there was also another one for the existing building, not the proposed addition, but it shows it at four feet. I thank you for that. And there was also a notation that was made here that shows and takes into account the 10% credit, if you will, given that you're doing a recharge system. Now, I understand that there were some comments from the board of, from the Department of Public Works concerning the recharge system. You're going to have to address that with them when you file whatever permits you need to file with DPW okay. about this distance from the lot line and, uh, and the actual positioning of the system itself. So that might have to be tweaked at a later date. But what we're doing here is we're just looking specifically at the the structure itself, the proposed addition that you want to um, that you want to build, and we want to ensure that it's going to. Actually, we've already granted that part of it, which mm -hmm. is the variance. This only has to do with a lot coverage requirement mm -hmm. for the uh, given that you're in the aquifer district. So the other parts with the dimensions, that was one of the conditions of that variance was that you provided us a revised plan. I would believe that that satisfies that. So therefore, that condition has already been satisfied. But all we have here today, gentlemen just in case I convoluted things, is we're only dealing with the lot size percentage co coverage, or percentage of coverage in the aquifer district. So I'm gonna call upon, if there's anyone in the hall, in the audience at this point in time, and I know this matter has been open on more than one public, for more than one public meeting. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either in favor or against this request? I can, uh, I can, uh, I can explain that there's no one in the audience other than the petitioner at this point in time. So uh, with your permission, gentlemen, I'm going to move on to the findings, that the proposed findings that I put together. Quick question. Sure. Why is he here? Yeah, <laughs> I, I know that that is a position, but I think at this point, given the circumstance that we don't have a building commissioner or an acting build, building commissioner, it oh. might be easy to make that determination. It might be easier for him just to get the permit and then move forward, and then it's not left handed so that's fine. Right, otherwise, I probably would have asked him to go and get a, an actual opinion, but we don't have someone at this point. All right. Could I have that a call, please? Sure, opinion. but we do have the office. You have it. Building, Somewhere. Building I gave covered. it to you. All right. So okay. the thing is, that's just not to it. Make sure no. That's on record. All right. So we do have people oh, okay. to answer to building requests and things of that nature uh, for permitting and, and any type of inspections. Okay. We do have that. It's just that we don't have. I don't. I think if I don't. Want, I don't want to speak out of out of line here, but we don't have an acting building inspector with the title of chief zoning uh, control officer at this very moment. It, that can be complicated because we do have a CO. He comes in on Fridays. Oh, we do? We okay. Do. And um, is he on an interim basis? Is yes. That, okay. Yes. So we even do have coverage for that. So I guess that's something that yeah. could have been done, but I don't know how else to answer your question, Mr. Human, other than the fact yeah. that we do have the option of granting it. Okay, that's fine. But the fact that you, uh, you've you acknowledged that there's a, a, a negative or a less net result, so therefore uh, you don't necessarily believe relief should be needs to be granted, we will do so anyway. Okay, that's fine. All right. Um, Mr. Bogoti has to come in and sign the continuance form. Okay. And last time. All right. Okay. So um, I guess one of the things, we'll make that a condition okay. of this granting, okay? okay? So, reading into the record, some proposed findings. The subject property is located at 610 State Road, Dartmouth, Massachusetts, and is in a general business and aquifer protection overlay district, Zone 3. The property consists of a lot with 4,952 square feet improved by a commercial single-story building. The lot is a non-conforming pre-existing corner lot with frontage on State Road, Route 6, and Hillcrest Street. The petitioner seeks a special permit to construct the 26 by Point two by 28 foot addition. Did I get that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, 26.2 by 28 foot addition to an existing building within the aquifer protection overlay district to increase lot coverage from 60.6% to 58.9%. So it's actually a decrease. 
net, it's a net decrease because of the 10%, 10%. Cover, uh, right. 10 credit he gets as a result of the recharge system. So the terms you use was to decrease lot coverage, to right? decrease lot coverage. Not to change lot coverage from... Sorry, how about to just alter lot coverage, how's that? To okay. alter lot coverage from 60.6 .6 to 58.9, does that work? Yeah, I think okay. so, because still technically they never had a special permit for that. So when, by doing this, you're giving them a special permit to increase because he's existing non-conforming, but they never got the proper special permit to do that. Yeah, I guess that's one way to look at it. Yeah. The petitioner seeks relief from Article 28, Section 375-28.5B8, prohibited, prohibited uses. Lot coverage above 10% or lot coverage above 2,500 square feet of any lot, whichever is greater. The board finds that in accordance with Mass General Law 40A, Section 9, the proposed increase in lot coverage does not substantially derogate from the public good. That's the legal standard, gentlemen, given that Except it's a Except it's not permit. an increase. Except that it's not an increase. It's a lot. The board coverage. finds that in accordance with yes, the, the proposed, proposed change. Change in lot coverage. There we go. Does not substantially derogate from the public good. Um, our usual uh, conditions where we require that they're going to get all necessary permits from the board, all conditions associated with previous variances, and also we're going to require that he has to sign, he has to come in and sign uh, the request for a continuance so that he could be here today. That's going to be a condition of the granting of this special permit. That's right? Fine. Right, right. He can sign it now, right? Yeah, I don't know if we, we don't have it here now. Oh, okay. But we'll get him to come in and sign that. I didn't sign all right, so at this point in time, if there are any questions of the petitioner? Time. I have no questions. I have no done. questions. Anybody else? All right, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I make a motion that we close the public hearing on case ZSP-23-3. Second a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. Now moving on, gentlemen, to the next phase. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve, uh, to approve this. I make a motion that we approve case number ZSP-23-3 for 610 State Road, Dartmouth, Mass, with the proposed findings and conditions previously discussed. Second a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. All right, so that takes care. Congratulations. All right, you can move on. Happy holidays to you and your family. All right, gentlemen, is there any other business that we need to entertain here this evening? If there isn't, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Well, I guess I can extend to everyone at home a very happy holiday and a happy new year to everyone, all of our viewers. And aside from that, is there anything else that we need to discuss? No. No? I make a motion that we adjourn. Second a motion. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Happy holidays, everyone.